Formosa. So, um, this uh, monk, his name is Pilindavasta, arose and bowed at the Buddha and said, when I first left home to follow the Buddha, meaning Shakyamuni Buddha, nah? if they don't mention anything else, meaning the, that present Buddha at that time, I entered the way. I often heard the thirst come one explain that there is nothing in this world that brings happiness. Once, when I was begging in the city, I was reflecting on this Dharma door, meaning this method of uh, the Buddha teaching. Dharma door, it means a method where they say door, because like you can enter through that. That's why they say Dhamma door. Just, just the same as method, okay? The Buddha taught him that nothing in the world brings happiness. So when he was like begging for arm in the city, he was remembering that and reflecting on that. And did not notice a poisonous thorn on the road until it had pricked my foot. My entire body experienced physical pain, poisonous thorn. There's such a thing as a poisonous thorn. Be careful where you're walking, huh? <laughs> With your shoes. When I was a kid, I remember I walked very often bare feet. Yeah, and now I just remember that. How did I do that even? I walked to school bare feet, I walked back bare feet, about one kilometer. And I walked mostly around the village from one place to another. Bare feet it. Yeah, I remember that. And nowadays, I see my dogs walk around without shoes. You can't wear shoes on dogs all the time. And I feel sorry for them already. And then I saw TV animals, they walk in the forest without, without shoes. Of course, they don't have shoes. And I said, how do they do that? Won't they hurt themselves, you know, by some thorn or something? Won't they feel hurt on the rough surface? I even feel like that. But now I, that I remember. Now I talk to you because of the thorn I remember. Yeah, sometimes some thorn also prick my feet. Huh? And kids, you're invincible. <laughs> you just look at it. You try to pick it out <laughs> if you can. If not, you ask some of your buddy, you know, try to use. On the road, you know, in the tropical, you always have some thorn, like a cactus thorn or some bushes will have thorn when they dry or something break it, it's on the road, and it prick you, it pin inside. If it's not broken, you can just pull it out, you know? If it's broken inside, it's a problem. But don't worry, I always have a solution. There's the thorn that is dropped from the tree, that tree have other thorns. So I pluck one and use that to dig a hole <laughs> in where the thorn is and pick it out, yeah. If I cannot do it because of the special area, I cannot, then I ask my, Friend, we are all very expert because we all walk bare feet and we all have some <laughs> now and then to prick to our feet. No, we are kids. We are. Kids are the most wonderful time. We are invincible. Yeah, we fear nothing. We know nothing. <laughs> and we stop at nothing. Yeah, I climb trees, and, you know, float on the ocean. Yeah, I did. On the back, just lay on the water, floating. Yeah, and just enjoy the sun until my face burned. I, oh, could not even touch on it. Until all the body, you know, become so black and burned and red. And you come home, oh, oh, you cannot even touch the sheet. Nothing can come on your body. And I don't remember putting any oil, nothing. We were kids. We <laughs> were just invincible. It will just heal itself. And we do it again. <laughs> Not like have bad experience and stop because Vietnam have sea everywhere. No, the kids love to go to the beach and lay in there until we the sun going and then our body already all red and burned and suffering and then go home. You know, ooh, <laughs> ooh here, ooh there, but then go again. <laughs> Children, I guess the animals they are also like that. Yeah, too pure. You know, too too naive. Fear nothing, just walk on. <laughs> so at that time, when the thorn pricked to the foot of this uh, bichu, he experienced the whole body pain, but his mind, my mind also had an awareness. 
though it was aware of strong pain and recognized the feeling of pain, I knew that in my pure heart there was neither pain nor awareness of pain. There are two states of mind that exist at that moment of pain caused by the poison. One is the knowing of the pain, feeling of the pain. On the other hand, he knows that there is not true pain, no pain. Because normally when you have pain, you would just focus on the pain and you say, ah, yeah, 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 and then you cannot bear it. And you try to, you know, do this and that to take care of your pain or to try to ease your pain, but you don't have another awareness that nothing happened, yeah? That your real self has no experience of pain or damage or any trouble of any kind. So because he was in Samadhi, you know, he was already thinking of the method that the Buddha taught him. Therefore, he was already in Samadhi while he was still walking. It's just like I told you yesterday, I'm doing some job walking, but I don't see things. I don't see the way it is. I see in the purity of my mind. Yeah, heaven Lord told me that because you are so pure. That's why you see that so far the way you think it should be. And that because your soul is up, you don't see the whole world, but see a part of it only. That's what heaven explained to me. Because when I came back to the physical, the mind don't capish anymore. So I have to ask heaven, okay, what happened? So the bichu continue, mm. pilin davasa continue. I also thought, is it possible for one body to have two awarenesses? He was ask, asking himself. Having reflected on this for a while, my body and mind were suddenly empty. Not like empty, empty, but he's in samadhi. Nah? He don't feel the body anymore. Just like some of you sometimes. Yeah, or even you leave the body and look down and see, oh, who's that? <laughs> Sitting there, whoa, oh, oh. <laughs> so old <laughs> and crumpled. When you outside of your body, you are younger, vigorous and happy and beautiful. And when you're a little bit older, you, you go out of your body, you look down upon yourself sitting there and say, who is that? Whoa. After 21 days, my outflows disappeared. I accomplished a hardship and received certification in person and a confirmation that I had realized the level beyond learning. And the Buddha certified him. So the Buddha asked us about perfect penetration as I have been certified to that Purifying the awareness and forgetting the body is a superior method. Uh, through that, he attained a hardship. Okay? Purifying the awareness and forgetting the body. Can you do that? <laughs> no. Maybe he don't feel this every day, yeah? But he attained the ultimate of this goal, and then he can return to it on any time he wants. It's not like every day he go find a thorn, prick it, worry, <laughs> fit himself just to see if the pain causes him this awareness again. It's just like some of the monks before, they have the awareness of secretive and pervasive at the same time. This monk also experiences the pain, but no pain at the same time. Well, this you must have. Even I have. Sometimes I have trouble or sorrow, but on one hand I know there is not, nothing can affect me. Very clear, as clear as the nose that I see on the chocolate face, huh? like that, <laughs> your chocolate brother. It's very clear like that. On one hand you are feeling sorry with the situation or with someone or with the world, but on the other hand, very clear that nothing happens really. Understand what I'm saying? Yes. All right, I hope. <laughs> but you do experience that. Yeah, you do know that. It's just you forget or you didn't pay attention. Pay attention to your progress, okay? So that you know that you progress. Hmm? And that encourages you to continue. Huh? That knowing that you go the right path, that's all. Not because we try to collect <laughs> experience like, <laughs> like medals or... <laughs> Or like uh, trophies, okay? We should know where we, yeah, where we are and where we're going. The calendar, <laughs> <laughs> super. Iron woman, right?
Oh. Truly, I don't know why, because if if I'm in the cave right now, no, I just do leisure, you know, do do some paperwork, doing nothing. And then occasionally we'll feel tired. Cannot talk like this. Cannot imagine. I, just before I come here, I couldn't imagine I go out and talk for three hours. I was thinking, Master, can I make it? <laughs> I talk to myself, just like you do, you know. Can you make it? Oh, because you still have to work, you have to go to school. <laughs> and then it just go in, huh? And I don't have anything special, more than you had. I just have one bowl of these, the rice soup. And what else did I have? Yeah, with this uh, bean curd tofu. This you cannot eat a lot, you know, it's very salty. Because I don't have appetite. Only that thing can make me be able to swallow the, the soup. I know if I'm out here, I don't know how many hours in, until I come back, yeah? So that was the breakfast, no? And then a little bit curry yeah, that you had, that's it. Nothing else. And one half, a little bite of this guava, a bite about this big. This big. You know why? Because I had to bite it first and then I give it to the ghost, otherwise they cannot eat it. That's all. You know, I eat something so that I can take some out for the ghost outside. Hungry ghost, yeah. Otherwise I was also very lazy to eat. Didn't want to eat I didn't want to do anything. And I thought I could not make it today. They come in out and talk. But then I did. Hours long, non stop. <laughs> can believe that. The next one. <laughs> the next one name is Suputi. Suputi arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet and said to the Buddha, from distant cow paths until now, my mind has been unobstructed. I remember as many of my past lives as there are sands in the Ganges River. Can you tell me how much that is? Cannot. Cannot, yeah. Ganges River sand, who can even count it, yeah? So he has even been in different lives, so cowboys, as many as Ganges River. Imagine how many lifetimes you have passed through and doing the same thing. He has also doing the same thing, like other monks and nuns before saying, we have been practicing this and that in cowboys. So, from the beginning, not that they have to reincarnate. They reincarnate on Earth or physical uh, universe for some different reason. They want to help sentient beings, yeah? That's why. And kaupas after kaupas, like the Ganges River sand, doing all this tirelessly. Imagine how compassionate these saints people are, the Buddhas. Are. And we just do a little bit physical work. I'm tired. Can't. <laughs> Don't want. I'm so tired. Don't want. <laughs> Don't want to do it. I need to sleep. Wait until you pass your life, then you can sleep all the time. <laughs> it's coming soon. Don't worry about it. You know, sooner than we think. I just blink my eyes more or less, and I'm already 30 years more than when I first begin. It seems like only in a number, but, it, you know, it's etched in your <laughs> body and make a real difference, yeah? So now uh, this Bodhisattva Saputi feeling like from the beginning in my mother's womb, he even know that, you can see it past like that. I knew emptiness and tranquility already when he was a fetus to the extent that the ten directions became empty and I caused living beings to be certified to the nature of emptiness. Wow, powerful. Yeah, in the womb already can certify people <laughs> aware of the illusion of existence, yeah. emptiness. Having received the first come one's revelation that the enlightened nature is true emptiness, that the nature of emptiness is perfect and bright. I attain a hardship and suddenly enter into the thus come one sea of magnificent, bright emptiness. With knowledge and views identical with the Buddha, I was certified as being beyond learning. 
in the liberation of the nature of emptiness, I am unsurpassed. The Buddha asked about perfect penetration. As I have been certified to it, all appearances enter into nothingness. Nothingness and what becomes nothingness both disappear. Turning phenomena back to the void is the foremost method. What mean the void and what mean emptiness? They are the same, okay? They are the same. Void or emptiness the same. But not emptiness as the emptiness like you all leave this room and the room become just void of anything. It's not like that. Because he said here, he said here that the enlightened nature is true emptiness. That the nature of emptiness is perfect and bright. This is when you contact with the light, when you see the true nature of enlightenment, that's the light, which you see sometimes, thanks to the diligence practice. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> turning phenomena back to the void is the foremost method, because he could penetrate all phenomena that turn back to nothingness, and then even the turning back phenomena and the emptiness itself we both disappear, and nothingness will disappear. In the beginning, it's nothing, and then from nothing spring phenomena and material, physical existence, and even then he can turn it all back into the beginning of nothingness. But then even the appearance that enter into nothingness and the nothingness itself will disappear also. Then he became truly enlightened. So he said that turning phenomena back to the void is the foremost method for him, yeah. contemplating on the emptiness of all things, and then even forsake the emptiness. That's his method. Well, maybe we talk again later, huh? So Sariputra will be the next. Huh? I mark it here. When you hear the name Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, then you know the calendar <laughs> is almost end because she has a big calendar. <laughs> so we have 15 more. We had 10 already. 25 Bodhisattva will tell you different methods of cultivation. I don't blame you if you leave me. You have too much choice. <laughs> Spoil with choices. Okay, Monday, breathing, <laughs> choose <laughs> flavor. Uh, Wednesday, uh, emptiness. <laughs> uh, Thursday, void. <laughs> and Friday, thought. Uh, Saturday, six cents. The six cents. And Sunday, take a rest, right? <laughs> <laughs> Even God have a holiday on. Take a rest on Sunday. Okay. Lucky God, yeah? I don't have a break on Sunday. We should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who have taken time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and Nirvana. And also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. Thank you for being good. <laughs> for being attentive. Yeah. Apparently, at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye bye. <laughs>